So Chuck, what's, you got another question? Yes, I do, and it's actually coming from Chris, who is on the phone. Oh, there. excellent, excellent. Let's go straight to it. Chris, thanks for calling into Star Talk. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, I was wondering about nanobots. Uh, didn't know if they could be considered a virus or or not because they're not alive or uh, a lot of baggage there. I mean, could they nanobots be controlled to where you guys have just mentioned the zombies? Maybe they can be self-aware and turn you into a zombie or... Mm. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, there's been a lot of loose talk with the prefix nano. Right. Nano literally means one billionth. Right. So a nanosecond is a billionth of a second, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. And so nanobiology and nanotech technically means things that are the size of a billionth of a meter. Very tiny tools, life form, whatever it is you're doing. Lately I've since seen people talk about nanobots which are just little robots that crawl around on your desk, right. right? I mean, they're small, so call them a small bot. But save nano for when you really mean it. And or so, an iPod. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so Chris's point, of course, is if we can make viruses that we control that are sort of machine machines but are small like viruses, we can infect you with something that we've manufactured in the lab. So well, there is nanotech that is targeting disease. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of talk about... That would be nanobots for good. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the positive force of Marvel Comics or what have you. The, these nano, nano agents, which are still very much in the, mm, I would say, the front end of the research process, um, it is imagined would target, for example, killing cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they would recognize something on the surface of the cell that said, I'm a cancer cell, and then go in and, and kill it with a poison or what have you. Um, but in the hands of the diabolical evil genius. Uh -huh. Well, the question really is to ask, is there a way to make a nanobot self-reproducing? Uh, mm -hmm. If a the, nanobot, way, the way life would, the way a virus If a nanobot out. could be self-reproducing, then indeed you could have an out-of-control infectious problem. Because it would have to replicate itself yes. in order for that to happen. Yes. Like a virus would do. Like a virus. So okay. then you're really walking the line between what's man-made and what's... Right. At some point, we're, we're not controlling machines. We're controlling biological molecules. Right? Well, and then the other thing that is going I mean, What's on the difference at that level? There's no well, difference. What's, the other thing that's going on now is that uh, we have this dichotomy of purpose where people in public health want to know what's going on with viruses in the natural world so we're ready and we make our countermeasures, our vaccines and what have you. But on the other hand, there's a lot of folks that say, well, the best way to answer that question is to do man-made evolution. Let's direct um, the evolution of, of viruses in the lab, manipulate them, turn them into monster viruses, and see, you know, what does it take to be a monster virus. So, um, <laughs> last year, two you different You were scaring teams, the crap out of me right know. now. Last year, two different teams, one in Wisconsin and one in Rotterdam, um, indeed made a super killer form of flu in the lab. And a whole lot of people said, why in the world would you do such a thing? Yes, and why? And those are now sitting in freezers, right? We well, kept them! Last month, not to be outdone by Americans, because, you know, they don't want to be outdone by Americans with anything. The Chinese, a lab in Harbin, made 127 man-made flu viruses, oh God. of which five readily spread in the air between guinea pigs and killed them. Oh, my God. So this is the new the new cusp that we're on oh. is, oh, we're trying to do it for good. We're trying to see in advance what nature might do. But in the process, you're putting in a freezer Armageddon. People, and people were afraid of physicists. <laughs> the biologists are plumb crazy. You are not lying, man. Oh, my God. I mean, I'll take an atom bomb any day over this. Yeah, i got to tell you, in the fraternity of science, you guys are animal house. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't like that, check this out. No, Have stop there. No, 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 no. You got something you got worse more? than that? Okay. Oh right. Good. You, got, you got 20 <laughs> seconds. Go. Most synthetic biology, there's a competition called iGEM. In order to compete... High school students and college students have to make a novel, not pre-existing microorganism. In, the, in 2012, there were 248 competing teams, meaning 248 previously non-existent microbes were made by high school and college students. That's the end. Of, that's the end. That's the end of the world, right here. <laughs> what you just told us.